everyone, and thanks so much for joining us today at Coalesce. I'm really happy to be the host of the workshop today. My name is Ali Dericles, and I'm a partner manager here at DBT Labs. And I'll be the host of Clearing the Path, a career progression framework for individual growth. So today we'll be learning about data career paths with experts, Liz Bianco Lane, who's a manager of data analytics at Brooklyn Data Co., as well as Megan Cassidy, who's the lead analyst at Brooklyn Data Co. Both Liz and Megan are passionate about helping others find their unique voice and pathway within data teams. Together, they have experience in the classroom, as well as data teams big and small. Now, before we begin, I just want to share some quick notes on how you can participate in this session. We encourage you to be interactive and participate throughout today's workshop. All chat conversations are taking place in DBT Slack in the Coalesce Clearing the Path channel. So if you haven't joined the Slack channel yet, now is a really good time to do so. So to get the chat warmed up, uh, I invite you to introduce yourself, let us know where you're calling in from, and what your dream job in data would be. Could be anything. After the session, Liz and Megan will be available in the channel to answer any questions that we don't get to in the Q&A today. So with that, let's get started. I'll pass it over to Liz and Megan. Hi, everyone. Um, we'd like to welcome you to this workshop on navigating your career path. We're excited to share some of Brooklyn Data's established and emerging best practices, and our hope is that these practices serve you in developing or refactoring your career path. Um, so we're really happy for your interest in this topic. Hope you come away from this workshop with some tangible next steps, and we're eager to learn from you as well through the workshop and through the follow-up today in the Slack channel. As Ali mentioned, our intention today is to give you a framework and tools for reflecting on your career path, as well as some examples of how we've applied this framework to our own careers. Presenting along with me today is Liz. Liz is a manager of data analytics in her second year of managing teams here at Brooklyn Data Company, AKA BDC, and she's my manager. Uh, she's based in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm an individual contributor and lead analyst based out of Washington, DC, and I've been with BDC for about a year and a half. Um, before we get started, we really wanna take a moment to shout out our amazing people ops team, especially Kelly Dory and Rocio Garza Tisdale, who have been a big part in developing our career frameworks at BDC. And another thank you goes out to our partnerships manager, Rachel Asaro, um, who project managed the development of this workshop, as well as the rest of our amazing partnerships team. We couldn't have done this without you all. Throughout the workshop, as Ali mentioned, we'll be dropping some prompts, questions, and resources in Slack. So if you haven't joined our workshop channel yet, head over. Again, that's Coalesce Clearing the Path in the DBT Slack. And we'll reserve 10 to 15 minutes at the end to respond to your questions and comments live, and then stick around afterwards. First, a little bit of context on our organization and team. Our main offering at BDC is a data and analytics team as a service, from data engineering to analytics engineering to reporting and insights and strategy. Scott Bright and others started the company in Brooklyn, but the team was always fully distributed from the beginning. At this point, the team collaborates across 12 countries, and we've grown from three team members in 2019 to 95 here in 2002, 22 going back in time. Uh, we more than doubled over the past year, so there's lots of ICs and managers with their own career paths to manage, so this is a topic near and dear to our hearts. Just to keep us organized, here's a quick agenda for today's workshop. We'll talk about the importance of reflection, give you some examples of what that might look like and prompts to start reflecting yourself, and then we'll discuss figuring out where you and your goals fit into your organization, if they do. Uh, how to take action and describe some of the tools that BDC uses for leveling conversations. So the first thing that we really wanna emphasize is the importance of reflection. So what do we mean by reflection? Um, you're gonna wanna think about your current journey and what's gonna set you up best for the 
greatest opportunities without getting too ahead of yourself or backing yourself into a corner. Um, we're going to want to gather as much data as possible on what you're doing today, what's working, what's not working, because at the end of the day, you're ultimately responsible for your own career development, so you want to set yourself up for success with as much information as possible. Reflection is one of those things that can sound like you're supposed to like go for a hike to a mountaintop with your leather-bound journal. Um, and while hiking is great, journaling is wonderful, uh, you can do that. It might be a little easier to just schedule some dedicated time on your calendar, uh, turn off Slack, anything that might prove to be distracting, uh, and just start thinking. Uh, a great way to get yourself started is to talk with a friend, a colleague, a manager if you have a relationship like Megan and I are lucky enough to have, um, and just, you know, start figuring things out. Um, you can use journals to keep track of your progress, both goals and accomplishments. Uh, you might want to look back on past reviews or feedback that you've gotten. Um, that can help you get a sense of how far you've come, what some continued areas of growth are, what some through lines of trends in your career so far have been. And you can take a look at job posts to get a better idea of what types of roles are out there. We're all data people. We know that the title of the role usually has very little to do with the description of the role. Um, and finally, if you track your time like we do, um, that's a really great data-driven way of figuring out where does your time go each week. Um, so that's a, some good places to get started. So Liz and I are going to walk you through what reflection could look like. Um, we're going to be asking each other a series of questions that you could either think about on your own, with a peer, or a trusted manager. Each of the reflection questions will be in the Coalesce Clearing the Path Slack channel. If you feel comfortable sharing your own thoughts, we would super love to hear them. They could be just the inspiration that someone else in the audience is looking for. So to kick it off, Liz, what do you love about your job? This is really easy. Um, the people at BDC, in my opinion, are just the best people. Um, we have a, a great team that has a really diverse background and experiences. So that means anytime a client asks you a question, you're like, oh, I've never done that before. You have somebody to ask. And that's something that I think is so rare. I've been, you know, different sized data teams, and it's just, you never. I've never experienced having that many people to just ask questions and get really great feedback from. Um, and plus, they're all like nice and funny, too. So that helps. How about you, Megan? Yeah, well, I have to plus one to the people. Um, but for me, too, what's really great is as a consultancy, we work with lots of different clients from um, lots of different industries. And so I'm always able to learn different stacks and tools. Um, and so it's just a great learning environment, kind of like a little boot camp to, <laughs> to get me as much experience as I can. Um, and another thing that I personally really value is transparent communication. Um, I've found that my coworkers at BDC are professional, but friendly and very empathetic, and also egoless, which I think it can be rare. Um, I never felt like I had to earn the right to speak or have an opinion. I just felt, you know, valued as a human being. So that was pretty cool. Always good to just be valued as a human. Yeah. Um, Megan, I'm glad you love your job, but what would make it more satisfying? Sure. Um, so I love being a consultant. That was my CEO laughing in the background. Um, I love being a consultant, but um, I think I do miss some of that in-house feel of being able to like see things all the way through from discovery to insights. Um, a lot of times my job is to help the client like automate tasks or to set up their own BI tool and enable them to do exploration and discovery. And sometimes I miss being the person who gets to, you know, do the exploratory analysis themselves. Because as I am the person coming through their data, I'm like, ah, oh, if I had time, I would look into that. That would be so cool. There might be a cool nugget there. So I miss, I miss that aspect of it from, from not being in-house. What about you, Liz? Um, what would make your job more satisfying? I feel like our, our issue is the same from like a slightly different role perspective. Um, again, as a consultant, like sometimes we really do get to get in the room and drive strategy. And sometimes there's a little bit of a blocker of like being in the exact right room at the exact right time when the like requirements gathering conversations are happening, when you can really get your hands around this is the problem and this is how we should solve it. And 
that can be frustrating when you're out of the room because you're like, oh, if I hadn't, if I hadn't like missed that wave, I could be so much more impactful. Um, and I think, you know, data people, we always are thinking about like, how can I make the most impact? How can I help the most people? Um, and so it would be nice to more consistently, again, I get to do it a lot, but it's like always get to do that would be the dream. Yeah, and you'd be super good at that. So love that for you too. <laughs> um, so another thing that you might want to consider when reflecting is what might you want to be doing more of? Are there talents or interests or skills that you have, but they're not being fully utilized in your current role? Um, and at BDC, we actually have something called a stay interview every six months with our people operations team. It's similar to the types of questions that can often be asked in an exit interview, but we don't wait for you to want to exit <laughs> to ask you. Um, and so the idea is folks can um, really express you know, what they would aspire towards or what they want to do beyond their current role, which really gets the conversation going about what the future could potentially look like for them. Um, so one of the questions we actually ask in our state interview is, what do you want to do more of? So Liz, what, what's that for you? Yeah, so uh, being at BDC was my first opportunity to be a people manager, and so all my focus and energy has been on being a people manager, being a like client manager, all those sorts of responsibilities. Um, and then I think back to when I first started at BDC and I was an individual contributor and I got to learn so much so fast. Um, and that was really validating and really um, like provided an encouragement that I miss a little bit. And so keeping, keeping space in my calendar for a little bit of individual contributor work where I can like get my hands on the data, remember what that feels like, provide better insights to my team when they, like, or empathize better when they struggle. Um, all that are things that I really miss. How about you, Megan? Um, so I've thought about being a people manager like Liz, um, but at BDC, managers there manage data engineers and analytics engineers in addition to data analysts. So I think that I would want to grow uh, technically across the stack a little bit more to broaden my technical knowledge before I felt really comfortable um, being able to provide um, as much mentorship as I'd want to in a role like that. But I do know because I've previously was a teacher that I really enjoy teaching and collaborating and mentoring. So I'm trying to figure out if I would be best served doing that in a more like lead IC role or as, as a people manager. Everybody at BDC wants Megan to be a manager, but she's also very good as a mentor, so no pressure. Um, this question I really love because it's not just about figuring out, or really it's not figuring out what you're good at doing or what people rely on you for because that might not be interesting to you at all. Um, you might just want to like keep that skill where it is and maybe shove it in a closet. Um, you want to think about this as how do you make the most of your skills? Or alternatively, what do you want to be known for? So Megan, what do you want to be known for? Yeah, thank you for the caveats to that question because uh, me personally, like, I take some fire notes, I set up a quick calendar invite. So fast. And I synthesize information from in Slack for my team quite often, but I know that I actually don't want to be a project manager. Um, so that's something where it's like, that's a strength and I could use that to grow into that role, but I know that's not the role for me. Um, but as part of that, something that I really value is strong communication, talking, communicating comes naturally for me. I'm very chatty. Um, I'm really interested in building a happy and fun and collaborative environment. So building trust and rapport is something that I would really love to be known for. And I get to practice that a lot as a consultant because we have to come in and quickly build, build trust with lots of different kinds of clients. Um, what about you, Liz? What skills would you like to leverage? I think I'm, I'm a pretty good natural salesperson. Um, I really do enjoy, and I think I have a knack for like getting in a room with people and getting at what they're trying to figure out what they're really looking for, and then figuring out how like the puzzle pieces of BDC can can fill the thing. Um, and I enjoy that, and it feels good, and it feels like I'm really like driving value to our organization. Um, but I find it like ridiculously tiring. Um, after these calls, I like sometimes need to go lie down. Uh, so finding the right balance with that and finding a little more grace with being able to do that and then being able to just move on with my day without feeling totally wiped, that would be like a really great way to leverage that skill.
Yeah, Liz is very good at that and definitely deserves a nap after some meetings that we're in together. Um, another thing that you want to consider, which you might not think about, is it's just as important to know what you don't want to do as to what you like doing. So you really want to consider what are you not interested in doing or what would you like to do less of? Are there certain things that you're less excited about? Are there any particular areas that you just right now don't have an interest in developing? Um, so Liz, what's on that list for you? Yeah, this is one of those things that I'm sure will change at some point. Um, but right now, if like, if I followed the kind of immediate, like easy, we, again, we have a framework, not a ladder at BDC, so I can go in all sorts of directions. Um, but if it were a ladder, the next thing would be managing other managers. And maybe it's just because like, I'm still nailing the being a manager myself part, but uh, it's just not something I'm interested in right now. I really, as I mentioned, I love getting a little bit of that individual contributor time. I love getting to like get in the weeds on things, and I feel like I'm not ready to zoom out to that level yet. So um, it's just not something I'm interested in. How about you? Well, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I do want to gain more breadth across the stack. And I'm sorry to like half the people in this room, but I don't want to be an analytics engineer. I just want to learn more about it so that I can be a better data analyst and maybe one day a better um, manager. Um, so for me, it's trying to figure out like how to not cross in that line or like let my perfectionism take over and be like, but I'm not as good as this AE mm -hmm. and figure out, you know, what is, what are the pieces that I really need technically to be better at my job and that would enhance it without fully crossing over into that role. I hear you on that. Um, I think many of us have probably had the experience of getting hired to a job, get about a year in. And you look back at your job description, which was more accurate than the job title, but still, uh, it's just wildly different from what your day to day actually looks like now. Um, it might be that you're doing things that are not there at all. Um, you might be not doing the things that are there. You might be doing what's there plus a million other things. Um, no matter what the situation is, I encourage you to take stock of the differences, what, what those deltas are, and bring them up with your manager. It's a really good opportunity to get on the same page, make sure that you're doing work worth doing. Maybe there's been some sort of drift or miscommunication along the line that you need to deal with. Um, and so just a great opportunity to kind of course correct, uh, and whether that's updating the job description or updating what you do every day. Um, this one is, I think, particularly interested for Megan because she was actually the first person to be promoted from within to lead analyst at BDC. We did not have a great job description of what that looks like or what that meant. Um, so we had to have a conversation about that. And um, this type of thing, I mean, it happens at every organization, no matter, no matter how mature you are, no matter what your career framework is, just sometimes there's like not a good description. Um, so it's normal to have these conversations, but it's really important that you do have them. Um, so a lot of questions we just focus on were on, you know, just our individual selves, what we like, what we don't like, but it's also important to consider what your in ideal working environment is um, and what that might look like so you can get a better picture of the fit between yourself and your organization. So some things you might want to consider when you're thinking about your ideal work environment are things like, do you like high pressure environments? What, where are you on that spectrum? All these questions on this slide don't have a right or wrong answer, it's just what's right for you. Um, so another thing you might want to consider is, um, do you want to prioritize growth right now, like in the next six months to a year? Are you in a place where you want to experience rapid growth? Or are you in a place where work-life balance maybe matters a little bit more? Um, or you want to grow um, in a parallel track versus you know, high linear growth. So which environment is gonna let you do that in the way that you want? Um, another thing you might wanna consider is, do you like having a really well-defined 
role or do you want there to be room? Some people really like a role where it's sort of like, we're hiring you for this thing, but you're gonna have to figure out what the role is. And some people really love that. They love the creativity. It's a lot of space for exploration. Um, or you, do you wanna know day one coming in, you do X, Y, and Z each day and then you clock out and you go home. Like what is the feel that's right for you? Do you have a clear list in your mind of what, what needs to be in that environment to really make you happy and let you thrive? Of course, there's always going to be pros and cons to every organization. It's very hard, if not impossible, to find that perfect fit. Um, but you have to weigh what's most essential to you today and think about how you're setting yourself up for future success. So, you know, if you're taking a little bit of a rest time now, make sure you're still learning and exploring so you're gathering data for, for what that next high growth moment is going to be and so you can time it right. Um, so with those needs in mind, um, now you can consider, does the role you want exist within your organization? If so, awesome, super easy. Uh, now you just need to figure out what are the benchmarks for that role? Do I need to be doing them in my job right now before I can get promoted to it? Do I just need to be excelling in my current job before I can be promoted? Do I need to maybe, can, or can I over-index on some things and under-index on others and average out to be promoted? Uh, all companies are different on this, so good to ask those questions. Um, if the role doesn't exist in your organization, but you love where you are, this might be a really good opportunity to think about, is there a business case I can make for saying, I think you really need to have a job with this title or something like that and like this description, and I think it will help the business in this way, and I think I should do it. Um, that, if, especially if you're in a growing or flexible organization, can be a great way to like get almost everything you want. You'll probably have to compromise. Um, or maybe the role that you want just doesn't make sense at your current org, or maybe you're just not happy at your current organization. All sorts of reasons to move on. In that case, you've done all this reflection. You know exactly what you're looking for next. So it's like pretty easy to start that LinkedIn search now. So you know what you want, and it's time to start building towards your goals. This could look like finding time to talk to your manager, get on the same page. Hopefully everybody here, I think this was asked in the Slack earlier, uh, hopefully everyone here does have time to talk to their manager, regularly scheduled. If you don't, I promise it's not too much to ask. Um, someone laughed and I'm nervous for them. Uh, you may want to get a little extra validation on where you stand, particularly if you and your manager are not quite aligned on some things. Then you might want to talk to colleagues, get feedback on what your strengths are, what your areas of growth are. Um, that can help you find that alignment. And finally, again, maybe, maybe you're just ready to move on, and then you, know, you can start a, a job search, and I'm sure you'll find something great out there. Um, so we want to share with you what our leveling benchmarks and conversations with managers and ICs look like at Brooklyn Data. Um, your organization might not have a framework, be iterating on their framework, or might have a super robust framework um, already in place, but we're hoping that sharing uh, our resources with you in this section might spark some ideas or be a jumping off point for you to have a conversation with your own manager or with your people operations team. Um, about a year ago, Brooklyn Data barely had a leveling framework, um, and it's developed a lot since then. So I'd like you to take you on the journey of what that looked like for us. And um, before having a framework, a promotion would happen when your manager basically felt like you were ready to have one. And it relied heavily on your relationship with your manager and their communication style. Uh, Liz and I were definitely both told we got a promotion like in a one-on-one -on -one or a brief Slack message. Um, so as we grew and had more than three managers, we needed to start codifying levels and, and making these um, conversations uh, more uniform throughout the org. So the first iteration of this was what we called the technical skills matrix. And we used a good old G sheet and we picked out what we thought were the essential technical skills that an IC should have, and we created five levels within each skill. Novice, advanced beginner, competent, proficient, and expert. And we defined what each of those was, and we filled them in, in a matrix. Um, 
for each IC technical role. Um, so this is just a brief snapshot. I believe we have 17 technical skills that um, were across all of our analyst, uh, analytics engineer and data engineer roles. And so you would find you know, what your role is and look at the row across in the, in the purple heat map and figure out, okay, where am I? Am I competent? Am I novice? Um, and this could be a good starting off point to have with your manager because you could really hone in on a skill and at least that could be a good conversation starter. We had an artifact uh, to point to. Um, but we quickly found that this just wasn't enough for us. Um, and so I would like to take this opportunity to really encourage you to have a feedback loop. It has been incredibly valuable for us to be able to create a safe space where ICs felt that they could go to people operations or go to their manager and give some honest feedback about what was working with this framework, what wasn't working with this framework. And we've really benefited so much from that, from all the requirements that we have to how check-in manage uh, conversations actually go with our managers. So I'm gonna share what some of that feedback was, what the fixes were, um, and the impact that it had. So it was in the name. We called it a technical skills framework, but we also have to have you know, non-technical skills. Um, so this framework was really only covering the technical pieces for technical employees, but we have other employees. We have a great partnerships team. We have a people operations team. This leveling does not do anything for them. Um, so we decided to find all skills needed throughout the entire organization. Um, they ended up falling into six different categories. We picked the modern data stack, analytical thinking, communication, emotional intelligence, interpersonal development, and leadership. And then we defined skills within each of those. And within those skills, there were also levels. And you'll see that this is no longer in a Google Sheet. We switched to using an app called Progression. Uh, so we'll refer to this as our progression framework. And um, what's really great is that our people operations team have actually made our progression framework available to all of you. We've made a public version of this. So that link is gonna be dropped in the Slack channel. And so you'll have all of this and you can use it um, at your org or as a conversation starter at your org. Um, the great thing about this was um, really being able to have something that the whole team could use and rally around. Um, and it also made you know, employees whose strengths might be more non-technical really know that those are valued. Um, we're consultants, we have to talk to people all the time, synchronously and asynchronously, so it was really important that those, those non-technical skills shown. Um, another piece of feedback we got were that the skill level additions were too, definitions, excuse me, were too broad. Um, you know, what does novice really mean when you put it within a specific skill? So we decided to add more concrete examples within each skill and better define what those levels were. So since we're at Coalesce, um, we'll give a DBT example. So before it was just like, are you a novice at DBT? Do you have an incomplete understanding? <laughs> um, and so then we move from like, no, okay, here's what this actually means. Can you produce documentation and basic tests? Can you run tests and models locally on your machine? Can you develop basic models and do you understand the use of the reference function kind of as an equalizing bar for everyone? And then what does it mean to go from novice to advanced beginner? Well, it means you can do everything in novice, but you can also do things like develop intermediate complexity models, use pre-existing macros to reduce code verbosity. And so really giving those examples, not boxing in people too much, but giving them enough concrete um, pieces to go off of really helped hone in when you had that conversation with your manager of like, which of these bullet points do I really need to be working on and what do I need to hit? One more flag that we heard about was that there just wasn't a standardized process for leveling conversations between managers and their direct reports. So depending on what team you were on, you would have a really different experience across the organization. So we've implemented a process using the check-in feature in progression. Uh, now, when somebody wants to get a sense of how they're doing or if they want to maybe start talking about what their next promotion looks like, they can kick off a check-in, um, either against their current role or that desired role that they're thinking of next. And um, 
the progression will prompt them to give examples of how they're demonstrating the skills required for that role. Um, and they'll rate themselves on whether they're meeting those expectations, exceeding them, or if it's still a growth area. It's framed like really positively and nice. Um, and then the manager gets to see that and fill out the same thing for their direct report. So thinking through those skills, how has this person exemplified this skill? Are they at the level that we expect them to be? If not, what level are they at? If it's below expectations, then what's, what's the gap? What do they need support-wise to get to that next level? And finally, uh, the manager and the person uh, who started off the check-in um, get together, like face-to-face, -face, and have a conversation. Uh, and you'll probably breeze over most of the things that you agree on or you know, swap adding in more examples. Um, but you're really, you're really trying to figure out, anytime you disagree, what's the thing you can both agree on? And so you have that conversation, get to the bottom of it, make sure that you're on the same page. Uh, overall, uh, this has led to a more consistent leveling across the organization with clear goals and skills tied to, um, <laughs> tied to levels that you can work towards. Uh, it's also opens the door for managers and people ops to work together and ensure that levels are uh, consistent across the organization. Um, so we continue to iterate on this framework. We, we like what we've got in progression so far, but we can always make it better. Um, the way that we've presented this is still with levels, right? And so sometimes that to people that can feel like it's a ladder and I have got to climb it and I've got to get to the next level. Um, but we want there to be enough fluidity to account for the fact that careers aren't always linear. There are ebbs and flows to rapid growth and balance. Life happens, priorities shift, and the path that you want to take might change. Um, so our People Ops team is in the process of creating a career development guide as a resource for all employees with development and promotion frameworks to better capture the spirit and culture of the career progress beyond a list of levels. Um, and so I'm going to walk you through what our framework principles are. And for us, those are really heavily tied to our company values, and so that's how they were developed. Um, our first principle is that professional development at BDC is individualized, so we want to make sure that we support team members' strengths and interests with enough flexibility to identify their growth opportunities. Um, another principle is that career progression at BDC is an open framework and career accomplishments are publicly celebrated. So that involves having detailed job descriptions and level and competencies. We want to give other team members access to their coworkers who are currently ha hold the roles that they want across the organization. So I've definitely had conversations with people levels above me and people levels below me who have come, you know, I go to them and say, ah, what is it that I really need to do to, you know, get where you are? Um, any pointers, you know, um, I'm working on this project, like how can I take it to the next level? And so just having that open communication with folks who might not necessarily be on your team but are still within the organization. And we really try to make sure that we have visible announcements celebrating um, team members' contributions and achievements. Um, we do that in our announcements channel, our wins channel, and our internal Slack at um, all hands meetings with the company to really make sure that we're celebrating the great work um, that our coworkers are doing. Um, the third framework principle we have is that career frameworks are expected to evolve. Um, as we've seen throughout this conference, our industry and the world around us is constantly changing and growing. So that means that we should be regularly iterating on this um, so that we can meet how team members want to develop their careers. And the fourth principle that we have is that you are the primary owner of your career, but the company is a support partner in your professional development. You're not on an island. Um, so BDC provides on-the-job resources to learn and grow and an annual education allowance to help us subsidize our external training and opportunities and managers likewise provide space for ongoing coaching and feedback. And our last tidbit is that um, the company wants every team member to reach their full potential. You know, that's a nice sentiment, but what does it mean? Uh, team members who are most effective at improving their own informants are also a multiplier for those around them. So they help enhance and leverage others' performance, not just their own. And individual and team success directly impacts our ability to successfully deliver, deliver services to clients and partners. 
We know that not every organization is going to have the same pro process as BDC, although we're very happy with it and would recommend it. Um, so no matter how it works in your organization, there are some pretty clear next steps that you can take. First, you need to make sure that you and your manager are on the same page. Have a conversation to make sure that your manager knows what your goals are um, and that you know how close you are to achieving those goals at your organization. You want to understand what your responsibilities are in order to get there. What are your timelines? What are the things you need to do? How can you get the opportunities to do them? And your manager shares in this responsibility. So how are they going to make sure that you have the opportunities you're looking for and that you have the support you need to grow in that area because it can be really hard, if not impossible, to just make that happen by yourself without support. If you and your manager don't have this kind of relationship, if there's a lot of resistance, this might be a good time to find another champion within the organization who can help you figure out how to work around it, how to get those opportunities, how to get that support for growth. And no matter how it shakes out, always a really good idea to get a written document together where you're going to set your goals, where you're going to keep track of your progress to your goals. Ideally, this will be shared with like whoever decides promotions within your organization. Um, I know I personally, I know a lot of people who have experienced like, oh, I'm all set for my next promotion, and then like their manager leaves and it just disappears into nowhere. Um, so having something that's like written and shared, you've been really open about what you're working towards, can help mitigate a lot of that risk. Uh, so we hope this workshop has sparked some ideas for you. If you check out the channel, uh, you'll see links to the resources we've mentioned. Um, and you can use that or pass them on to your people ops team. Um, and if during this talk you were like, oh wow, BDC sounds awesome. Um, lucky you, we're hiring. So, uh, you know, take a look in the chat. I'm sure that uh, Kelly has posted a link there. Yeah, so we have the remaining minutes to take any questions or comments or ideas from the Slack channel. Sorry, we don't have like a mic for you. So if you're in the room and you want to ask a question, can you please ask it through Slack? All right. Yeah. Again, we have a couple minutes for questions. Um, so I'm going to just keep an eye on the Slack channel and read out uh, any attendee questions for you guys to answer. Yeah. All right. So thank you both for a great workshop today. Um, for everyone, if you'd like to continue the Q&A on the Slack, um, uh, our speakers will be there to answer questions for a little while after the session today. Um, so we'd love to keep the conversation going. And otherwise, thanks so much for being with us here today.